So today we're out in the shed. We're gonna be working on my father's push box. This is a push box that he just bought off Facebook Marketplace for $500, which is a really good deal. It's made out of quarter inch steel all the way around. As you can see here, the hooks for the John Deere quick attach, those are half inch thick plate steel. So that's really nice. Um, this thing's just really heavy duty and it's very heavy as well. As you can see, it's actually got a top lid so that you're able to add a top cutting edge for back dragging. So that's really nice. Um, one reason he got a really good deal on this is because the guy had actually bought the wrong size for the tractor. And if you come around here to the side, you can see he ended up bending the bottom lip of the push box here when he curled it all the way down. I believe the bottom lip here hit the loader arm itself. So it bent it here and it also bent it over here on this side. But that's gonna have no effect on this push box at all because the cutting edge itself is gonna hang down lower than this bent piece. So it's really gonna have no effect on it. And another reason he got a really good deal on it is because when the guy ordered the correct push box for his tractor, he ended up stripping off all the cutting edges and the skids off of this. So because of that, he got a really good deal on it, but that means I have to build two cutting edges for it and two skids for it. So that's what we're here to do today. So what my plans are for the top cutting edge is I've got a piece of hardened flat stock here. This is four inch by three eighths. See how thick that is there? So this is gonna be getting aligned right up with this top edge here. I'm gonna have it overhang the sides here. These are kind of like side feet for when you go to back drag. So I'm gonna have it overhanging these by maybe a quarter inch or so. So I gotta do that, line it up, and I'll make all my marks and then we'll drill it out. And that's pretty much all there is for the top cutting edge. And then um, as far as the bottom cutting edge, I've got these two pieces of hardened steel right here. These are half inch thick by three inch. These actually came off of my buddy's plow. He gave me these for this project. The only thing I'm gonna have to do is cut each one of them down and use one for each side. So I'll have one over here and one over here and they're gonna meet in the center here. Um, so I gotta cut them down to the right length. And then I also gotta redrill the holes obviously so they line up. The nice thing is on this push box, as you can see here, they've got um, pre-drilled holes and they're already pre-threaded as well. So I can thread in a regular half inch standard bolt right into them. Um, so you don't have to worry about having nuts and washers on the backside, which I really like. As far as the skids go, you can see they've got holes there. Um, they're square holes so that you could use a half inch carriage bolt. So I've got all the hardware for that as well. Um, and when I go to build the skid, I plan to build them the exact same way that I built them on my push box. And if you guys didn't see that push box build where I built myself an entire push box from scratch, I will link a video right here if you guys want to go see that. But in that video, I built my own skids from scratch and I plan on building these ones the exact same way. Over here, I've got a piece of quarter inch by three inch wide flat stock. Um, this is going to be for the skid mount. So this is going to stand up vertically. And then I've got some hardened steel over here. This is two by two angle iron. Um, I plan on ripping this in half with my plasma cutter and using a two inch strip of this to work as the bottom of the skid shoes themselves. Now, when I go to cut the skid mount to the correct size, I also plan to cut it like in a curvature here. So it's got a rounded corner. And that way when I tack the skid shoe itself into place, I could beat it with a hammer and kind of fold it up so that it's ramped up. Um, that way, if he goes to hit something with it, it'll ride up over top of it and it won't stop him. So that should work out really well. So that's the plan today. We're gonna get right to it. One other thing I wanna mention before we start is one of my subscribers, Tony G, had actually sent me a grill guard for the Kubota BX. He had watched my last video and seen how I almost took out my hood bonnet a few times. And he said he had an extra one laying around because he had upgraded his grill guard to the one that has pins on the sides. So you could remove the grill guard from the base or the mount itself so that you don't have to actually unbolt it every time you want to take off your hood bonnet so he had this laying around he sent it to me sent me a message saying that it was on its way and that it was an early christmas present so that was really nice of him tony really appreciate it man so you guys will see this in an upcoming video i plan to do a little bit of modifying on this probably going to add some screen mesh to this so no branches can come through it and i may even build it so that i can disconnect this lower mount so i don't have to unbolt it every time i want to take off my hood bonnet because in the summertime i take my bonnet off quite a bit to blow the dust and grass out of my tractor so you guys can look forward to that in a future video and one last thing i wanted to cover real quick as you can see here i've got a curtis industries box this is going to be in an upcoming video as well i plan on doing an unboxing and a first setup on what's in this box so make sure you guys stay tuned for that video as well that all being said let's go ahead and start going on this push box the first thing i'm going to do is line up this upper cutting edge i'm going to make my marks and we're going to drill it out and then we'll go ahead and move on to the skids okay so first thing we're going to do here is get this cutting edge lined up where i want i'm going to go ahead and make my marks and drill it out All right guys, so I've got this top cutting edge exactly where I want it now. 
Uh, for any of you who are wondering, it is 58 and a half inches long. That's where I had this uh, this piece of flat stock cut at, because obviously we can't have the full length of 60, because it's got to fit on the inside here. I have it sticking out from the side of these feet here, approximately a half inch, and I have roughly about a quarter inch of gap on either side as well, so that I know that it's centered from left to right. So this side's the same here, half inch gap. So. Should be all set, got it nice and straight. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Sharpie. We'll get these holes marked out and get them drilled. We got eighth inch holes pre-drilled now. Now we go ahead and step it up a couple bits until we hit half inch. using half inch grade eight bolts for the hardware here. I've got lock washers and regular washers to keep them nice and tight. snugged up and we should be all set with the top cutting edge. All right guys, so we've got the top cutting edge all finished up. We've got it all bolted in place. Probably gonna end up painting it later, um, but right now I'm just trying to get it all together so at least it's usable if it ends up snowing here. So that's all finished up. So now we're gonna work on building the skids for each side. So take a measurement here, coming across here. We've got 25 inches. It's actually just under, but that's okay because I want to go a little bit over. You always want to go a little bit past it because when you curl the skid bottoms up themselves, you want to make sure they're going to clear the box itself. So I always try to go a little bit over when I make my skid mounts. So 25 inches there. So we're going to cut the skid mounts themselves out of this three inch fly stock, like I said before. Uh, so I'm going to mark out 25 inches. We'll cut that twice. So we got one for each side. And then once we got these cut, I'll taper the corners so that they're rounded. And then once I do that, we'll go ahead and cut that angle iron in half, that hardened steel that I showed you guys earlier. And that's going to be the actual skid bottom. So let's get working on that now. Okay, we've got our two pieces right here. These are gonna be our two skid mounts. So now what we wanna do is shape the corners. So we're gonna round these edges a little bit. So what I've got here to round them is just a four inch piece of exhaust pipe. I'm gonna line up each edge on each corner here on each side. So once we're flush on both sides like that, go ahead and make my mark. You can see how nice and round that is. So that'll give the curvature we want for the skids themselves so that they can ramp up and slide over anything we come across.
So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the plasma cutter and I'll cut them off. And then we should be all set with the skid mounts for now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this exhaust pipe as my guide. That way I get a nice clean curve, hopefully. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up so that I'm centered on my line here with the plasma. That's looking pretty good there, so we're gonna try that. Here we go. Okay, should be all set with the skid mounts themselves. Just kind of see how them are shaping up. I'll take them on the grinder and clean them up a little bit, but them are looking really nice. So now we're gonna go ahead and rip that two by two hardened angle iron down so that we can get the bottom skid mounts made up. Okay, so now we're gonna rip this hardened angle iron in half. And to do that, I'm just gonna kind of rest it up on the push box so I have like a nice little table to work on. Which by the way, speaking of that, I do plan on building a whole new garage next spring. Um, so by the end of next summer, I should have a whole new garage. So you guys stay tuned for that. That's gonna be really nice. I'll actually have room to work and I'm gonna be doing a lot more projects like this and a lot more maintenance type jobs and repair videos as well. This down. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take a plasma cutter. I'm basically gonna put it right in the crotch of this angle iron and I'm gonna blow the angle iron right in half. All right, so I've got it cut in half. So this is gonna be the piece that we're gonna be using for the bottom of the skid shoes. Now what I'm gonna do is grab the grinder and knock this slag off, kind of clean this edge up. This is gonna be the inside edge, so you're really not gonna see it. The outside edge is gonna be the nice clean piece that was the original piece there. So let me go ahead and grab the grinder out. I'll get this thing cleaned up and we should be all set to start putting together the rest of the skid. Right, guys so i've got this piece all cleaned up now what i'm going to do now is measure out 29 and a half inches because even though this is only 25 inches we're going to have more skid than we do skid mount because we're now going to be curling the edge of the skids up the sides of the uh, skid mounts here so then i need a couple more inches for that so 29 and a half inches is what i measured out so that's what we're going to cut this at so let's get that cut up now we'll cut two slabs of that and then we'll be all set to start welding them to the skid mounts Okay, so now we've got both skid bottoms cut in half here. You can see we've got two pieces here. So this is the hardened steel for the bottom of the skis. We've got them ground down, cleaned up, and ready to get welded. They're gonna be getting welded to our skid mounts that we've made earlier. So you can see I've cleaned the edge up here. So we've got a nice round edge here. Um, so these are gonna be getting mounted right on top, just like so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my middle mark on the skid bottoms, and I'm gonna find the center mark as well on the skid mounts themselves. I'll line them two marks up. We'll lay them like this. I've got my 90 degree magnets right here, so that'll make sure we keep a true 90. And I'll use one of those on each side here, and then we'll weld this thing together. And once we get it welded together, we're going to use a torch to heat this up and bend it over. So let me get the centers marked on these, and we'll get them set up with the magnets and start tacking them into place. Okay, so these skid bottoms here, they measure out to being 30 inches long. So half of that's 15, obviously. We'll do another mark here at 15. Our skid mounts themselves them are 25 inches so we want to go 12 and a half so 12 and a half okay, so we'll get one of these out of the way start with one here line up the 
up our marks with our skid plate and our skid bottom. Use our trusty magnets here. And we'll get a few tack welds on here. Okay, now I've got it tacked in place. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some stitch welds on the front and some stitch welds on the back as well. And at the end, I'm gonna fully weld the front, I think. That way it's nice and strong. Okay, so we got this one all set. Move on to the next one here. Right, guys well there you have it we've got them all welded together i've got it fully welded i was only going to stitch weld it but i ended up just fully welding them because by the time i got done stitch welding it it wasn't going to be much time just to finish fully welding it so they're completely welded now on both sides um so now what we're going to do is we're going to put these upside down in my vise here and we're going to heat them up with a torch right around this area and we're going to slowly beat these edges with a hammer so that we can bend them around the uh skid mount and as we kind of bend them around, I'll be tacking them until we bend it all the way around to the end there. And then I'll fully weld them on each side and uh, they'll be all set. So I'm going to get this set up in device now and we'll get to it. kind of see how this is turning out. 
you can see how nice and rounded that is now. It's gonna end up working really good. Like I said, I did this on my own push box and it worked fantastic. Um, so now what I gotta do is just finish welding the inside here on this side, and then I can go ahead and do the same exact thing to the other side here. Um, I'm gonna end up doing the rest of them off camera, but I just wanna show you guys one of them so you get to see the process that I take to do this. All right guys, well there you go. It's gonna be the finished product. That's how it's gonna look when I'm all done. So I'm gonna get the rest of these done now, and as soon as they're done, I'll show you guys the finished product. All right guys, so here are the skids all made up. As you can see, they turned out pretty darn good. So like I said before, I ended up just fully welding them. I've got them nice and bent up in the front and the back here as well. Back side again, fully welded. They turned out really nice. Here's the other one. So yeah, it's doing pretty good. So now what we need to do is throw them on a the drill press. But before we do that, um, we're gonna have to line them up on the sides of the push box. So these are gonna sit something just like that. You can see how they're gonna look on there. So what we need to do now is mark all three mounting holes. And then once we do, I'm gonna space them out probably one inch above and below all three holes. That way I can drill two holes and then cut it out with my plasma cutter to make slots. So I'm gonna have three slots here, that way they could be adjustable up and down. So let me get these things marked and I'll show you what the next step's gonna be. All right, so I've got the skid as centered as I can on the push box. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark out all these holes now. All right, so now as you can see, I've got them all marked out here. So now what I'm gonna do is grab a straight edge or a square and I'm just gonna draw a line right down the center here. Okay, now we've got our center mark. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch um, either way. So I'm gonna make a mark at three quarter of an inch off one end, so right there. And I'm gonna make a mark from three quarter on the other end. So right there. So basically I'm gonna drill two holes, one there, one there, and that's kind of like the midway point there. And once I drill a half inch hole there and there, I'll take the plasma cutter and I'll cut out that center. That way I can leave myself a nice little slider there so that I can make these adjustable once they're on the push box. I've got all my holes marked out here, as you can see. So we're gonna go ahead and throw it on there. We're gonna start with an eighth inch drill bit and then we're gonna step it up slowly until we reach a half inch. All right guys, we've got all the holes drilled out here as you can see. So that turned out nicely. That's how it looks on the other end. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my straight edge here. I'm gonna make one line on the outer edge of both these circles, just like that. So one there and one there. And then I'll use this flat edge as a guide and I'll take the plasma cutter and we're gonna run it right down the side here and we're gonna blow the center right out. That way we have one nice you know, full slot here. So we'll have three slots on each one and that'll allow it to move up and down to be adjustable. Okay, so we'll make our marks here now. Just line up our square here. Just like that. So that is the area we're gonna be cutting out with the plasma and the holes basically allow us that access point to be able to cut this middle section out here.
As you can see there, we've got a perfect clean slot. So that's what we're gonna do with the rest of them. All right guys, as you can see, I've got the holes all cleaned up now. I've knocked the slag out of them. They turned out really nice. So let's go ahead and give these things a quick test fit before we paint them and see how they line up here. There's three. So now you guys can kind of see how that's gonna work. And then as you can see here, they're fully adjustable. And we've got like an inch to go down as well. So if we need to bring that down quite a bit with the new cutting edge, we can. All right, guys. So since the test fit went well, I'm going to go ahead and shoot these with a coat of paint. I've got some rust here two times. This is all I use. It's really good stuff. Seems like it lasts forever. Um, this is semi-gloss. That's mainly the black that I'll use on equipment. Um, so I'm going to shoot these real quick with this. And uh, we'll slap them back on there. And as soon as it's done, our very last task here is to cut these two cutting edges here to make them fit inside of the push box here for the bottom edge. And then we just gotta mark and drill the holes and then this thing will be all done. All right, we've got everything painted up nicely with that uh, Rust-Oleum paint. See the uh, skids turned out really nice. So I'm gonna give these about another 10 minutes to dry and then we'll throw them on the push box. All right guys, so as you can see, we've got these skids all bolted in place. You can see the back drag and this one's on as well. So now what we're doing is we're starting to line up for the two hardened half inch cutting edges. Um, so what we're gonna have to do is, if you kind of see where these are gonna lay, that's about where that one's gonna sit on the end there. That one's sitting on the end. So both of these are gonna have to get cut at the halfway point. So both of these are gonna be probably cut like 10 inches. So what we're gonna do right now is measure where the halfway point is in this push box. I'll make a mark, I'll take the straight edge, we'll draw a line and then I'll take it to the chop saw. We'll cut both of these in half so that they lay in there nicely. And then I can mark the holes in the backside and we could draw our, our last uh, remaining holes here and get these things bolted in and this push box will be done. All right, so this measures 58 and three quarter. So we need to take half 58 and three quarter, which is 29 and three eighths, I believe. So we're gonna make a mark here, 29 and three eighths. 29 and three eighths is right there. So there's our halfway mark. Okay, there's our halfway point. So that's where we need to have these bolts cut to. And we're just gonna go off our mark that we made here. So I'm gonna measure the other one now. Now we've got our marks. We're gonna get this up on the chop saw. We'll get these cut in half. We'll lay them back up here and see how everything looks. Okay, that lines up good. So now I'm gonna do is throw out a couple bolts in. The two corner holes actually line up with the bolt holes already. So I'm gonna throw a bolt in each corner here and then I'm gonna mark it from the backside. Now I'm gonna tip this thing over. I'll let the uh, cutting edge rest naturally. Now that we have the skids adjusted properly, we'll have the right amount of gap down here. So I'll let the cutting edge sit down naturally. I'll mark it from the backside and we'll throw it up on the press and get this thing drilled out. Hey guys, so here's where we're at. Um, I've got two of the holes fully drilled. The rest of them, I have started the holes, but unfortunately I wore out my drill bits to the point to where I couldn't get through any more of the holes without really working my drill press hard. At least for now, I can get it mounted up here. And uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is my father's got a larger drill press there, so I'm gonna buy a new drill bit. I'll use his drill press and we'll finish it off at his house. But 
basically all that's left is just to drill four more holes here. But for now, at least I can get the cutting edges completely mounted up. And if it snows, he could definitely use this, no problem at all. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these bolts threaded in. So let's get that done. We'll get it tightened up and I'll set this thing down and show you guys the finished product. Alrighty guys, and there she is, the finished product. Finally done with it. You guys can see how the skids turned out. There's a nice shot of the skids there. So now you can see what I mean about curling these up. You've got hardened steel on the bottom. It should last him a long time for what little plowing he does. Um, you can see here we've got this 3 8 inch thick top cutting edge. That's gonna work really well for him for back dragging. He'll be able to get right up next to his garage doors and back drag all the snow from there. So that's really nice. You can see I've used all grade eight hardware. So that's good. Lock washers on everything. Um, down here we've got the carriage bolts like I showed you guys earlier, half inch carriage bolts. And then last but not least, the main cutting edges which are down here. And those are half inch thick by three inch uh, hardened steel as well. I'll probably go over there next weekend and help him draw out the rest of these. Probably do it in his garage where we got a little bit more space because as you can see in my garage, things are a little bit tight. So I do know eventually he wants to go to a poly cutting edge anyways. So this is more or less just to get him by for um, this winter. But eventually we're gonna go with a plastic poly cutting edge in here. That way he doesn't have to worry about ruining his uh, sealer on his blacktop. Poly edges are nice because they still cut through the ice like a metal edge, but they are not as hard on the asphalt as the metal cutting edges. So eventually that's what he's gonna go to. As far as the back drag cutting edge, that's going to be fine because for as little as he's going to be using that, it's not going to create any issues with his blacktop. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys found it useful for any of you guys who are trying to build some skids this year for your own push box. It's getting pretty late at night, so I'm going to get everything cleaned up here, go relax the rest of the weekend. I'm probably not going to have this video edited by the end of Friday night, but I hope to have it edited sometime later this week or early weekend, something like that. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found anything useful in this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned next week when I unbox this artillery product and don't forget to comment like subscribe as always we'll see you guys in the next one